I do believe the one bead method is the devil. Are you having difficulty creating nails using the one bead method? Let me show you my method that takes all the frustration out of building a great structured nail. I'm gonna break down why I believe you're wasting your time mastering the one bead method. Let's get started. Make learning acrylic much easier by using my slow cure monomer. This will change your nail game. Available at nailcareer.com. This video is not to diss anybody whatsoever. If you are doing the one bead method and you're doing it with the apex and the free edge correctly and the cuticle nice and smooth. So if you're doing that, you're not the devil. That's fantastic. And I commend you for getting to that point. What I'm talking about is people who are learning or even three or four years into their career, still thinking if they can't do the one bead that they're really not very good. And that is, it's upsetting to me because if I had that to live up to, I wouldn't have probably continued because I would think that I'm always failing. The one bead method is not the only way to create a great nail. Let me show you how to create a nail with the one bead method. The reason why we do this is for speed, but you must build up to this technique. This technique of the one bead method is best achieved with experience, but I do not recommend this method if you are learning to do nails. It's misleading to think that this is the goal as you begin your nail career. In fact, you never have to learn this method. Many great nail techs never use this method. This method is only developed over time as you get faster and faster. You can combine all the sections of the nail properly into one bead. Okay, so that is a one bead. And when you have a lot of experience, you can do that. It's not to say that you can't do the one bead method, but it's not the goal, especially when you're first starting to do nails. You can really sabotage. If you think that's where you're supposed to go, and I'll tell you why, because there's so many things that I'm doing in that 30, 40 second period to get that nail. Now it can look good from an aerial point of view. You see lots of videos of people doing nails and from an aerial point of view, it looks great. Turning it sideways tells a completely different story. When you have it this way, you can't tell where the arch is or how the cuticles are or the free edge. If this nail was completely flat, no apex, it would look the same from an aerial point of view, whether it had an apex or not. So it looks great. If you turn it sideways, this is gonna tell us if it has everything it needs or not. Once you turn it sideways, we need to know that it has an apex in it. With the one bead method, the apex is often missed. And I'm gonna break it down and build the nails out with colors and show you the different sections of what I'm doing with the one bead method. I've been doing this for many, many, many years. When I first started learning, the one bead method wasn't even talked about. We eventually started doing it because you get so good at it. And the one bead method really is only for when you get so good at your liquid to powder ratio, building the nail and you get fast. I believe the one bead is sabotaging you because it is actually the fast way to do it. Don't learn how to do something fast before you first learn how to do it good. So how I came about the one bead was I learned how to do it properly and then I kept getting faster at it. So I was doing it correctly, but then it kept getting faster and faster and faster. Before you knew it, I wasn't going in sections anymore. I was just doing it in one bead. It's not the only way to build a nail, it's simply the faster way. If I'm suggesting you don't do the one bead, what do you do? I suggest you do it in segments because when a tech is doing a one bead, they're doing everything at once. And some might miss some of those things. Like I say, it's always in the details. So when you're doing a, a giant ball and you're trying to manage, like juggling 10 balls in the air, I'm suggesting you juggle with one and get comfortable and then add another one and then get comfortable and then add another one and get comfortable and so on and so on until you feel comfortable. You can juggle all 10 at once. So I'm going to start with one section 
and I'm going to start with the cuticle section. You can lay down a bead wherever you want. The cuticle, free edge, doesn't really matter. Just whatever you're comfortable with. Sometimes I'll start with the free edge and sometimes I'll start with the cuticle. So I'm going to lay down the cuticle bead and I'm going to make it yellow so we can see exactly where I'm putting it. And you can do each section in one bead if you like. Or you can do each section in three beads or four beads, whatever bead amount you think it takes to do that section, take your time and do it. Because when you first begin, maybe you will do it in five beads. The next time you do it, maybe you'll do it in four beads. And the next time in two beads. And the next time, maybe you'll do the cuticle area in one bead. So just take the baby steps. It's super, super, super important when you are making nails. Also, one disadvantage of the one bead is sometimes you use a different ratio for different sections. So if you've got the one bead, you can only get one ratio. And sometimes I've noticed too, if you are not able to do the one bead in the 30, 40 seconds before it dries, I'm working with fast set and most, a lot of people do. If you work with the fast set, you get a wetter bead because you think you have more time to cure it. But unfortunately, that is an undercured bead. And chasing your bead is not what you want to do. And that can lead to allergies. So I don't recommend that at all. And when I say the cuticle can be a bit of a wetter bead, just a slight bit wetter. I'm not chasing it. It's not running. You can see that I didn't chase that bead. So there's the cuticle bead. Now, if I look at that bead and I'm going, that's my section one, let's say, okay? I'm going to look at that bead and go, yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit thin. Maybe right here, just going to add a little bit there. Right, so now I've officially done it in two beads. So what? And then if I look at this side, maybe I'm thinking it could be a little bit thin over there. And probably not, but just to be sure, I'm just going to add a little bead in there. Okay, so officially I've done the cuticle area now in three beads, but I know it's good. I know it's right. I know it's all there. It's everything I need to work with. Okay, let's say we're going to do the free edge now. So I'm going to get a good size bead and do that free edge. And I'm going to lay that right here. I'm going to do it in this pretty green color. And I'm going to make sure that I take it right to the side. And I'm going to pat it out. Oh, I'm going to go almond. Okay, so that's basically my free edge. And you don't have to get perfect on the shape. I could start, I could do make this all square and make it almond if I want, but I know I'm going almond, so there's no point in wasting my product shaping it square. Unless you think the client might change their mind. <laughs> then you still have an option to go back. But it is better to shape it the shape that you want and then you save yourself a lot of filing. So I could make that a little bit more almond if I want. I'm not gonna get too lazy. Let's see if I can make it a little almondy. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I am gonna add stuff in the middle just to show you that even if I did put all the green across here, right, and meet the yellow, just because it's there doesn't mean that it's thick enough to be a complete nail. It may look like a nail, just like I was saying, some of the aerial shots you'll see of people putting down one beads, and this is not, again, against one bead people. <laughs> I just want to take away the frustration for somebody if you're trying to strive for that, why you might be so frustrated. Okay, so even though they're joining, just because the nail looks like it's complete doesn't mean that it is. You can see the natural nail sort of in that little spot right there. I'm just going to add that there for the free edge just to make sure that's not too thin. Okay, so I've got my free edge down. Here's a still of the side angle. You can see the cuticle is complete, the free edge is complete, but the sides and the apex are missing. That's the next step in the Susie method. 
Okay, so we got the cuticle bead down, we got the free edge bead down, and now I wanna pay attention to the sides. We wanna make sure that we have product on the sides because that is the stress point. It's all part of the apex, but I'm breaking it down into two beads. So the apex can cover the sides as well, but I'm gonna break it down even more. It's so much less stressful doing it this way. Creating beads perfectly is hard. So keep it small for you and keep it simple and just work your way up to it. And like I say, you really wanna master these skills first before you try to do it fast with one bead. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on this little side here. I wanna get my product in there and reinforce the side and make sure that it is nice and strong and really happy in there. Okay, it's a bit of a bigger bead than I really needed. But you see how that bead doesn't move? I'm telling this bead where to go. I'm telling it what to do. A running bead is in charge. And I don't want that. I want to be in charge of my bead. So if it's not running, I am controlling it and I'm telling it where to go. I don't want to be chasing it. Okay, so I patched up the one side. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to roll it over to this side. I think this needs a smaller bead, actually. I'm doing it in the different colors. You can see that we're doing like colored sections. This is too big of a bead, but let me just break it down a little bit. See how it's just sitting there waiting for me? Waiting for me to tell it what to do. And now I'm putting it into place. Making sure that I've got the strength and the acrylic that I need in that spot. This bead is super important because it's reinforcing the stress area. If it's going to break, it's right here. So I'm gonna go in for some black as the apex. If this was all nude or all pink, or if I did it all in black even, it'd be very hard to see. So right now we're able to break down the sections. And we've got the cuticle, free edge, and the sides. And the last section is going to be the apex. And I'm gonna place that guy right about there. I will also use this bead to fill in any little area that I feel that I might have missed with any other bead. But I'm concentrating in this area here. And considering the length, I'm gonna feather it out to about here. And I am going to feather the apex bead to the rest of the nail. And I often check the side, make sure I'm happy with the apex arch of it. And then I feather off. And this is more just doing this just because I can. You don't have to. If it's lumpy and bumpy, that's totally okay. That's to be expected when you're first learning how to do it. Black is very messy. <laughs> Okay, so that is my last bead and my final bead, but just to double check, I will just sort of check everything over and make sure that I've caught everything where I want it to be. And I'll look down the barrel of it too and make sure it's as thick as I want it to be, make sure those sides are taken care of. And if it's not, of course, this would be the time that I would add it. But you know what? That looks pretty good. I'm a little skeptical maybe in here, but I'm gonna add my fifth bead, which is just a catch-all. I'm gonna put it in a different color because we may see it being filed right off and we didn't need it at all. That's one great way to learn, right? So let's maybe put it in this, um, what's really bright here? Maybe the green, cause it's the free edge area that I'm concerned about. And I'm just a little concerned right there, make sure that it's thick enough or not. I think it is, and that's probably too much. It's, this looks dreadful. As cameraman was just saying, that's not a very nice looking nail. <laughs> The nail looks, yeah. It does look dreadful, doesn't it? It does. It, yeah, it looks really, uh, hmm. not the nicest nail I've seen no. it do. Hang tight. There's a method to my madness. Okay, so I'm just adding that green. You see how dreadful that is? I'm not 100% sure at the end there to make sure that it's going to make a smooth transition right to the free edge from my apex. And I could make it smooth and just file it and file it until it is smooth but it might be too thin. So I just wanted to add that there and we may file it right off. We're gonna find that out in a minute. Okay, I'm just gonna let that dry and then we're gonna sculpt it and find out how much of the product is left and we can clearly see the sections that we built, okay? 
These are the sections you need to have a beautiful structured nail. Cuticle, free edge, side, and apex. Always the sound that it's cured and ready to go. Okay, so get yourself a good set of files. And if you're buying mine, thank you so much for supporting me, you guys. I can't tell you how happy I am when every time I see a file go out the door. I do include an excellent menu to be able to help you understand what each file does for you. And it also suggests or tells you what it's not good for. Because sometimes you don't know. You wonder, can I use this file for natural nails? And so on and so on. So that helps you break it down a bit. So I'm going to get some, I think I'm going to do my coarse, medium and fine. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is... I'm just going to find the length and the shape that I want. Oh, this is ugly, isn't it? <laughs> Caraman's cringing. He does not like it at all. Well, it's... Not much a of a really reveal shot for you. It's kind of an industrial look. Yes. This is just a working nail, isn't it? So we are going to see by the colors that are left how much of I'm using in each section. You can also see what I'm filing, too. So I'm going near the cuticle right now. You can see how the black is being removed right where I feel it's nice and thin there. And then I'm going to go along my sides. And I'm shaping that nice little almond shape that I want. And you can see the black sort of removing off at the side there. And I'll do the same for this side. And you can see the black coming right off of there. I didn't need the black that far. looking pretty good. And I'll look down this way. Okay, so now I've, I'm pretty much happy with the cuticle. And now I'm just filing through here in this part and making sure that's not too high because I don't want my apex any higher than it has to be. I mean, the whole goal with nails is you want them as thin as they possibly can be, but thick enough for the strength that they need so the client doesn't break them. Okay, now I'm just going to smooth it all over with the medium. I'm going to put some nail polish on it so we can see how smooth and even it is because that looks like a mess. I'm just going to make this a little bit smoother because the polish I'm putting on is very unforgiving of any marks. Let's take a look at the final picture so we can break it down exactly what we did. Once it's completely sculpted, you can see all the sections, cuticle in yellow, sides in peach, free edge in green, and the apex in black. Put it all together, it's a perfectly structured nail. When you do the one bead method, when you create your bead, you have about 30 to 45 seconds when you're using traditional monomer to shape that product up into the nail that you want. When you do it with a one bead, you're doing all of the sections in one bead in 40 seconds. The reason why breaking it down, especially when you're first learning, into the cuticle, free edge, sides and apex in four different beads multiplies your seconds by four. So rather than having about 30 seconds to create the whole nail, you now have about 120 seconds to create the whole nail. Models will take the 120 seconds. So get good at your liquid to powder and making your beads before you get fast. And the one bead is faster if you're doing it right. One thing I do want to mention, when you are learning, you want to start with those liquid to powder ratio beads, the most important thing. I have this little worksheet you can grab. You can print this off from nailcareer.com and you can use it as a practice sheet. You get your liquid to powder ratio, you place those beads and you can start sculpting. This is just a template to show you the size of nails and the thickness and the different shapes. You can download this free at nailcareer.com. And what I have on my other hand is my new Susie's Quick Tips. These are long stiletto with a special frosty sugar coating on top. You can check those out at nailcareer.com. And I have long stiletto, which is what I'm wearing, coffin medium, and almond medium. And medium square is coming soon. 
liquid to powder ratio is the number one most important critical thing you need to start with when learning to do acrylic. Check this video out to help you with just that.